In this unit, we're going to look at how you can create web pages using a program called Dreamweaver. So let's start by considering what Dreamweaver is for and why you might want to use it. Dreamweaver provides a visual interface for creating web pages. It lets you concentrate on creating content, reducing the need to write the code that such content is based on. Though if you like code, then Dreamweaver helps you work with that too. It also lets you add style to your pages by again providing a simple interface to a complex language, CSS. As your site grows, Dreamweaver helps you manage it. You can create folders and move files around, and Dreamweaver will automatically update your content to reflect those changes. And when you're ready to put your site on the web, Dreamweaver makes that simple too. Going back another level, let's just think about what we mean by a website. Now that could be a large site for an educational institution with many sections and pages, similarly for a newspaper, or it could just be a single page, in this case a personal portfolio. Whatever the site and whatever size it is, underneath they're all made in the same way. So what are websites made of? The view of a web page that we're most used to is that rendered by our browser. However, underneath this is the code that's actually used to mark up our content. This code is HTML. This is the language that web pages are written in and that we will use Dreamweaver to help us write. HTML provides instructions to a browser on what the content is and how to render it. To create a web page in Dreamweaver, we'll save the file as HTML and then publish it to a web server. That makes it available to anyone through the web. So when someone types in the address of a website, the browser requests a copy of the page which is sent back as the HTML file. This HTML is read by the browser and the web page is rebuilt at the other end. So this is important. HTML provides the instructions, not the final content. That means we have to write good HTML so that the thing at the other end turns it into a good web page. So let's take a closer look at how to write those instructions in HTML. We'll use the example of a heading, but the principles apply to most HTML tags. Here we are marking up some text to be a heading. In this case, a top level heading 1. At the end of the content we want to be a heading, we close the h1 tag. So this instruction marks up the content between the opening and closing tags to be rendered as a heading 1. Which looks like this in a browser. Of course, this is just one tiny piece of the HTML that makes up even the simplest of web pages. Luckily, Dreamweaver makes creating the rest of this simple too. So when we create a new web page in Dreamweaver, it automatically adds the required HTML, to which we can then simply add our content and start marking it up. An important concept to understand is what HTML is for. It's a pretty simple language, and it's used to structure content. It tells the browser, for example, that this is a heading, a paragraph, a table. What it doesn't do is control how these elements are presented, how big they are, what colour they are, if they're underlined or not, for example. This is done in a different language that we'll look at later, CSS. So HTML is very important for structure, and we can't effectively add style without this structure as our foundation. So let's look at how to structure a page with HTML in Dreamweaver. We'll start looking at headings and paragraphs. With some text selected, we can use the Properties panel to set the format, in this case, a Heading 1. And here we can see the HTML written by Dreamweaver. We can use the same approach to create a Heading 2. So we're starting to build up some simple heading structure for our content. Overall, HTML lets us use six levels of headings, though in practice it's rare to use more than four. Another way to structure content is as a list. Just like in Microsoft Word, this is simply a case of selecting the text and clicking the list button. Like so. Looking at the HTML, you can see this requires slightly more complex code. But again, creating this is greatly simplified for us using Dreamweaver. Also, as in Word, we can create numbered or ordered lists, as well as bulleted ones. The HTML used is similar, but the end result is quite different. 
So an unordered list gives us bullets, an ordered list gives us numbers. Tables are another form of structure, in this case, intended for tabular data. Dreamweaver provides a simple interface to create tables, allowing to set properties such as the number of rows, columns, width, add a caption. And in the design view, this looks simple and familiar. In the HTML, however, we can see how complex the code required for even a simple table is. So that's quite a lot of code, and Dreamweaver is saving an awful lot of time writing it out, letting us concentrate on our content. Now while this table might look pretty simple, it doesn't have to. Later, we'll look at using CSS to style tables, as well as any other structural element. So moving on from structure, let's look at links. A key feature of any web page is the links both within your site and to other sites. That's what makes the web the web. We link content of our pages by selecting it, then entering a link address in the properties panel. Note that while this looks like a link in Dreamweaver, to follow it, we need to open our page in a browser. We can also link to other files on our site using the Browse for File feature. And you can see that this link simply points to another file within our site. Finally, you can link from one part of a page to another. For example, from a table of contents at the start to a specific content lower down the page. To demonstrate, let's add some more content and a section at the end called Conclusion. Now we add a named anchor, a defined point in the page that we can link to. In this case, we'll call it Conclusion. We can now link to this section using an internal link. Now I like to make these using the point to target feature to simply drag onto the anchor. That picks up the name and creates the link like so. Finally, let's consider how to add images to your pages. Again, Dreamweaver gives you a button to press to start the whole process. Now you simply browse to where your image is stored and select it, again just like you would in Word. Your image will now be inserted into your page at the point where your cursor was at the default image size, but you can of course change this. So that's as far as we'll go in this unit. Looking at our page in a browser, you can see that it's relatively simple, but well structured with some functionality through links and some decoration through images. The value of Dreamweaver has been in writing the HTML for us so that we can concentrate on our content. Now it's time for you to try this out yourself in the practical. To do this, we'll first introduce a few bits of the Dreamweaver interface you need to be familiar with. First, the document window. This is where you add and edit your content, either in the design view or the code view. The insert bar lets you add elements to the page, such as images, tables, links, and it has tabs to work with different types of elements. The properties panel lets you view and change the attributes of elements in the page. So that could be text formatting, adding new rows and columns to a table, or inserting links. This is context sensitive, so it changes depending on what you click on. Docked to the right of the screen are other panels. These include the files panel that we'll use throughout these tasks, as well as other panels that we'll use for more specific tasks. So when you're ready, work through the practical tasks and we'll see what you can build.